Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mighty Stream. Today is May the 1st. I'm excited to be with you this morning to do the Just for Today in a Meditation with you. I am brought to you by Hope Through Navigation. This is our Hood Recovery Services. Hood is an acronym, H-O-O-D, and it stands for Hope Offered On Demand. I'm busy daily creating content so that um, you will be able to access the topics that you need uh, at any time, the help that you need at any time. I am excited about this new venture, this program. It's a beautiful program and has already helped several individuals. So if you need to reach me, I want you to send me an email at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. Let me repeat that, recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. So let's get into it and see what today has for us. I believe it was on service work, it is. May 1st, self-worth in service. Being involved in service makes me feel worthwhile. When most of us arrived in Narcotics Anonymous, we had very little self-worth left to salvage. Many members say that they began to develop self-esteem through being of service early in their recovery. Something just short of a miracle occurs when we begin to have a positive impact on others' live, lives through our service efforts. Most of us don't have a lot of experience, strength, or hope to share at 30 Days Clean. In fact, some members will tell us in no uncertain terms that what we do best is listen, what we can do best is listen. But at 30 days, we do offer something to the addict just coming into the rooms of NA, struggling to get 24 hours clean. The very newest NA member, the one with only the desire to stop using and none of the tools can hardly imagine anyone staying clean for a year or two years or 10. But he or she can relate to those within 30 days, picking up a key tag with a look of pride and disbelief emblazoned on their faces. Service is something that is our unique gift, something that no one can take away from us. We give and we get. Through service, Many of us start on the sometimes long road back to becoming productive members of society. Just for today, I will be grateful for the opportunity to be of service. Indeed, indeed, reminds me of Gandhi, right? That we should be the change that we seek. This is a, a very fundamental fundamental meditation um, in regards to Narcotics Anonymous and service work, right? Because we always say in, in order to keep what we have, we have to give it away or give away freely what was freely given to us. Um, someone was at that meeting when we first showed up, someone started that meeting. There was someone that made the coffee at that meeting. There was someone that emptied ashtrays back then when I first started. Um, there was someone that um, made sure the atmosphere recovery was maintained. Um, there was someone that um, ordered literature. Um, there's different things that go into making meetings happen behind the scenes. And because of that, I can say that it's, it's an opportunity that some get involved in and most don't, do not, right? 80% of the people in the fellowship benefit from the service work of 20% of the people. And I'm hoping that you will be one of those 
few people that at 90 days you start getting involved in service work. There's things you can do from the first day that you come. But at 90 days, you're eligible for most meetings to be able to chair an in-person meeting. So I believe that my doing service work, um, I got involved in doing service work very early in my recovery. Uh, and I got involved because it gave me something to look forward to. It was an uh, opportunity for me to you know, help others, obviously, but it was also an opportunity for me to help myself. Um, at that time, I was working already, so it wasn't like I was trying to, um, you know, stretch myself and see if I could keep a commitment on a regular basis and if I had the personality to be able to handle, you know, service work, because sometimes it's not always easy but it's always beneficial, right? It's always beneficial. I wanna encourage you if you have any amount of clean time and you see a newcomer coming through the door and they're picking up their first, you know, white, all white key tag, I want to encourage you to do a different type of service work that many people don't think of as being service, but they mention it here, right? The newcomer can't really relate to an individual that it has, you know, all this clean time, but they can relate to the individual that has clean time a lot closer to their, their day, um, which is the 30 day mark, uh, even two weeks, you know, even a week, the person coming in the door and staying clean longer than a day has a message for the one coming in trying to get that day, right? Because we do ask most of the time, we ask that people not even share until they have 24 hours clean because we don't wanna hear, you know, the, the after effects of their using sometimes it's unclear thoughts, babbling, um, confusion, you know, nodding. So a lot of times we will ask that you just wait 24 hours to after you have clean, been clean 24 hours to share. And I think that's good. Sometimes I think depending on the drug, it should be longer, um, but we don't get into what people are using. We get into the fact that they want help. And that's the beautiful thing about Narcotics Anonymous. Today, I want to challenge you. If you're in that bracket of new clean time, or not, but if you are, I want to challenge you to do some service work by sharing, sharing how it was for you when you got to the fellowship. How was your getting your first 24 hours? How was it getting your first week, your first, you know what I'm saying, your first month? Can you be able to share that in a way that is helpful? A drug log is not helpful. You know, um, going on about, you know, um, the type of drug, how you used to cut it up, you know, who was with you, did you shoot, what, did you snort it, did you pop it, did you drink it, that's not helpful, that's not helpful, that's why we say we don't, we don't want to hear the drug log, because we all use something. Right. And a lot of times when we get into specifics about what we use and how we used and who we use with, it becomes a trigger. Even for people that have some clean time, it can become a trigger. And I'm always amazed at how we we have these unspoken. Uh, helpful points of guidance. You know, sometimes they are spoken. Sometimes someone is wise enough to write certain things into the format that, and it's approved on their group level, but they write it into the format. So it's a part of what is being expected when you come into the meeting. There's one meeting I go to, um, yeah, you know, it has, it's a rowdy bunch, you know, out of New York. Um, and they meet at nine o'clock. And when I'm at that nine o'clock meeting, there's some heart wrenching experiences that are 
shared. But after that meeting, it's a virtual meeting, after that meeting and before it, they have this thing they call the parking lot and they are very vulgar. Their, their speech to one another is vulgar. And for them, they're all just laughing and acting like this is everyday conversation. And then at nine o'clock, there's a switch that goes off or that is turned on and switches into the mode of recovery. And that's when I see the, um, you know, the con conflict in our personalities, right? Because the way that I'm behaving in the meeting should not just be the way that I behave in the meeting. The way that I behave in the meeting should not just be the way that I talk when I'm in the meeting. The way that I behave should be a part of my everyday life because I'm practicing these spiritual principles in all of my affairs, 24 seven, 365. Um, but they have written into the format, one of the most thorough formats that I have ever heard. Another one that I heard that I really liked was one done by a local group called the uh, Southside Group. I really like uh, their format that they no longer meet, but in this 9 a.m. New York meeting, the format talks about how you're expected to respect other people. When you share, right, no one wants to hear any misogynist or um, even if you're a man basher, right, there's a term for it, I can't call it to mind right now, but you're expected to be respectful of others when you share. No one wants to hear any racist comments. Most certainly the N word is not acceptable even though you get people on there that will slip from time to time. Everyone is not okay with the N word. It's not a uh, term that everyone is, is willing to even, it's not okay, right? I'm not getting ready to take a term that was meant to be derogatory and hurt and then embrace it like it's part of my everyday conversation. Me personally, and I personally don't care to hear it, but some people use it every day. And so when, they, when they're talking, it comes out, every other word, it comes out. And uh, so this format is very precise about how we should not be speaking. And we shouldn't be bullying people. We shouldn't be commenting on people's looks. Um, we shouldn't be cross-talking or trying to cross-talk, um, right? And so, you know, most of the time when they read the format, like I say, the atmosphere changes. It would be really nice if those were spiritual principles of love that they carried into their parking lot, you know, but they don't. You know, some people leave, they try to go into the parking lot because they need to be in the atmosphere of fellowshipping. Um, and you'll see them just drop out the meeting because, you know, the talk is very disgusting. Um, and so I just, you know, we could have a format for the meeting that doesn't necessarily apply to our personal lives, but it would be nice that if, if, we did service work on that level that we were an attraction even when we're off the meeting, right? And so I just want to suggest that if you're involved in making formats for your meeting, that you be conscientious that everyone is not the same and to have just a baseline of expectations. You know, so there's people that create that format, and that is a form of service work. There's many things that we benefit from in our fellowship, and I would say life in general. There's many things that we benefit off of the hard work of other people, and it's time for us to get in the game. I want to challenge you today to do some service work by sharing. I want to challenge you today to get in the game. There's places and communities. Many people are involved in spring cleaning. There's places and communities where people can actually go get free clothes, go get free food, 
Um, it's not a lot of red tape. Uh, and I want to encourage you to make some donations to those facilities that are not going to demand money. Uh, or at least if they do very low prices, Goodwill is not one of those places. Um, but some people shop there and they find very beautiful things, you know. Um, but I just want to say maybe find some way to donate some of the stuff you're not using that's a form of service work and whoever you donate it to they're doing a form of service work so we can pay our energy forward and do service on so many different levels you know sometimes just showing up at a meeting is a stretch for a person you know there's particular meetings in my area I, my shadow never darkens their door um, just because when I'm in that meeting, there's a feeling of um, superiority and inferiority. And I refuse to put myself in an atmosphere where someone is looking down their nose at me because of the shade of my skin. Um, but there are some meetings that I want to start incorporating in my getting back to making in-person meetings. Um, and I just want to encourage you, you know, that even if you're trying to stretch yourself to show up, someone else needs to see that you're making it. Someone else needs to see that you're, you're hanging in there. And so I just want to encourage you in that way. My name is Mighty Stream. I'm excited to be with you. And I cannot wait to talk to you until tomorrow. <laughs> talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know if I said that right, but I know you know what I mean. So have a beautiful day. Be awesome. Be awesome. Be who you are, right? Acknowledge who you are. When you're sitting and talking to people, just remember, be who you are. Let them see the real you. Give the person the, the courtesy of lending your ear to them and hearing them thoroughly actively feeding it back to them so you can make sure before you make a comment that you heard them uh, or just kind, gentle eye contact and head nod to let them know that you're affirming where they're at. Okay, and if you need to criticize someone or you give them some input that may not be received warmly, make sure that you sit that, that uh, information, what you're about to share with them, sit it down on the couch of love sit it down on the couch of love and then share it because from that posture of love most things are received very well <laughs> mighty stream and i will see you tomorrow talk to you guys later <laughs>